is a member's business debate on motion number 1157 in the name of Liam MacArthur on the damaging impact of air discount scheme charges. Changes. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members wishing to speak in this debate please press the request to speak buttons now. I now call on Liam MacArthur uh, to open this debate. Uh, seven minutes, Liam. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'm delighted to have this opportunity to lead a debate on an issue that I've been pursuing over many months, as I know the uh, Minister will testify. Uh, before turning to the specific concerns I have regarding the decision to cut any and all work-related travel from the air discount scheme, I wish to acknowledge the cross-party support uh, my motion has received and thank all those who signed the motion and joined me in calling uh, for ministers to review this decision. Uh, I look forward to hearing colleagues' contributions later, uh, as well as the response, of course, from the Minister. I will set out why I think not only must this decision be reviewed, but why it must be overturned. In making that case, I will highlight the damage the cut is already causing and likely to cause, but also the entirely spurious basis on which that decision was made. First, it may be helpful if I start with a little historical context. The Air Discount Scheme was introduced in 2006 by my colleague Tavish Scott. It followed years of debate about how to address the real social and economic disadvantage suffered by communities across the Highlands and Islands as a result of the high cost of accessing lifeline air services. Providing a 40% reduction on airfares for all those mainly resident in the islands and northwestern highlands was a very deliberate attempt to level the playing field. As someone born and brought up in Shetland, Tavish understood fully the inextricable link between economic development on the one hand uh, and social cohesion and population retention on the other. It is that link, presumably, that convinced the European Commission that this scheme was indeed a genuine aid of social character. It is the same link, however, that has been completely ignored by the Scottish Government in choosing back in April to arbitrarily remove work-related travel from that scheme. In seeking to justify their decision to cut ADS, Scottish Ministers have made three claims. First, that it was never the intention of the scheme to cover work-related travel. Second, that the scheme risks contravening EU state aid rules, raising the possibility of fines and potential clawback. And finally, Mr Brown told me on 23rd of December that, quote, we do not believe a publicly funded scheme should be used to subsidise public and private sector travel budgets. Let me take each of these arguments in turn. Firstly, for SNP ministers to argue that they know better the intentions of Tavish Scott, uh, Jim Wallace and those responsible for putting in place the air discount scheme is ludicrous. Indeed, presumably Mr Brown's predecessor Stuart Stevenson had the same intentions when he rolled forward ADS unamended in 2008. Or is the government now saying that Mr Stevenson did not know what he was doing? The second argument that somehow the scheme contravenes EU state aid rules is equally specious or suggests the government believes the Commission doesn't know what it's doing. The truth is that similar schemes are in operation across the EU in the Balearics, Madeira, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Corsica and most recently the German islands. When the Corsican scheme was approved in 2005, the announcement specifically stated that the Commission considers that living on an island can be a disadvantage which justifies transport aid. So it is clear the Commission had no concerns about the scheme operating in the Highlands and Islands and would have been content to sanction a further extension from April 2011. Scottish ministers who admit to carrying out no assessment of other schemes operating in the EU have used state aid rules as a smokescreen to press ahead with cuts to the scheme that were both unnecessary and potentially hugely damaging. And having applied for the removal of work-related travel from ADS, ministers have succeeded in building these new conditions into the scheme approved by the Commission. At a meeting in June with Tavish Scott and myself, the, the Minister and Cabinet Secretary agreed to seek further guidance on the Commission position. This seemed like a half-hearted attempt to close the door after having pushed the horse into bolting. The fact that this same undertaking was then made to the leaders of the three islands councils three months later confirmed the total lack of urgency or appetite by ministers to deal with this issue seriously. The final argument used to support the cuts to ADS is that public funding should not be used to subsidise business travel. Again, this is nonsense. When tolls were removed from bridges across Scotland, businesses weren't asked to keep coughing up. In announcing plans in January to extend ADS to Collinsy re residents, Mr Brown himself said the government, quote, recognised the social and economic benefits that an extension to this scheme will bring. And ministers boast of the benefit to businesses in the Western Isles of RET, the record-breaking pilot scheme targeted solely at that community for reasons best explained by SNP strategists. Here, the subsidy to business comes at a cost not just to the public purse, but to many businesses in Orkney and Shetland who have seen displacement of tourism tra traffic and a competitive advantage handed to counterparts in the Western Isles. So the reasons offered by ministers for cutting ADS simply don't stack up. 
Perhaps this explains why there was no prior consultation on the proposal slipped out in budget documents last December. In a recent survey of businesses, charities, voluntary groups and the public sector in Orkney, almost 60% of respondents said they were unaware of the cut prior to its introduction in April. Even now, 73% say they don't know how the cuts would be enforced. Indeed, the advice from the government and some of their backbenchers seems to be don't ask, don't tell. This is a ridiculous situation and it is giving rise to confusion, inconsistency and increasingly anger. Likewise, assessing the impact of the decision in the islands at least has been left to myself and Tavish Scott. The feedback over the summer shows damage is already being done to business competitiveness, skills training and the ability of charities, voluntary organisations and public bodies to participate in events and networking opportunities on the Scottish mainland. 77% of respondents to the survey I carried out in Orkney insist they will have to cut back on the flights they make over and above decision they had already taken as a result of the economic climate. Even so, almost half confirmed their travel costs will still increase. One firm said air transport is a vital link for us, allowing us to forge new links with suppliers and contractors, negotiate becoming involved with public-private funding opportunities and bringing new money into Orkney. To attend conferences raises our profile and the profile of the county, especially in terms of marine renewables. Another said the ability to travel and participate in relevant events is essential not just to our business, but to ensure Orkney has properly skilled people locally to keep, and to keep them in our economy. Another talked of the risk that uh, cuts to ADS and an inability to travel could, quote, result in housing in the Isles becoming marginalised. So the evidence shows that this cut to ADS has increased costs, eroded business competitiveness and undermined efforts to improve skills levels. Over a period, the risk is that businesses, voluntary groups and the public sector in Orkney will become more isolated from wider networks and the places where decisions affecting them are being taken. There is also a clear threat to the lifeline routes themselves. The service between Kirkwall and Inverness has already been reduced after a sharp decline in passenger numbers prompted directly by the cut to ADS. Fingers, figures for September are not yet out, but anecdotal evidence and from speaking to staff at Kirkwall Airport, there's a real danger we will see passenger numbers continue to fall dramatically. This situation is not sustainable. Asking ever smaller numbers of passengers to pay ever higher prices to fly is a recipe for disaster, particularly on a lifeline air service. Deputy Presiding Officer, the basis for the decision to cut ADS is untenable, the impact is unsustainable, and the case for a rethink is now unanswerable. I hope the Minister recognises the strength of feeling and the breadth of support this campaign enjoys, and will take the opportunity this evening to confirm his intention to reverse this unnecessary, ill-founded and damaging cut. Thank you very much indeed.